Uh, welcome back. Uh, in this module, we are talking about radical chain polymerization and we discussed kinetics of radical chain polymerization in last class. I will continue with that and I will also talk about various types of initiator in this lecture. These are the topics I, as I mentioned I will cover in this lecture. Now in last lecture we have discussed about the rate of radical chain polymerization and we described that the initiation process depends on the type of initiation one is using and so the rate of initiation Ri also depend on the radical initiation process which I will discuss after some time. I also discussed that rate of propagation and polymerization both are similar because rate of polymerization is given by the rate of disappearance of monomers from the medium which is almost give, governed by rate of propagation which is given by the expression this expression where this term m dot within third bracket is given by the total concentration of radical present in the reaction mixture. Remember we had considered the rate of all radical reactions were equal which means it was independent on the size of the radical. So, even if the propagating radical is small or large their reactivity were equal. This is similar assumption as we taken for step growth polymerization where we discussed about the equal reactivity of functional groups. And this is a fair is assumption as we uh, described and it is also experimentally proven. Now we will we'll move to the termination step. Termination is done by bimolar bimolecular interaction between the two radical propagating radicals and generally it can be done by two ways either by coupling or combination and second is by disproportionation reaction. In case of coupling that we get a single polymer chain from two radicals propagating radicals whereas in case of disproportionation we get two polymer chains from two propagating radicals. So, in general we can write this is the termination step where Kt includes both this K for coupling or combination, K for disproportionation and if these two are equal then we can just write Kt is equal to this plus this and if they are not in equal proportion which is indeed the case most cases the termination step is done by or most cases the termination happens by coupling or combination process than this proportionation reaction. And if we assume that A is the fraction of propagating radical which is getting terminated by combination process then 1 minus A would be the fraction of propagating radicals which are term getting terminated by this proportionation reaction then Kt would be A K T C plus 1 minus A K T D. So, the rate of termination is given by the rate of this reaction K T m dot square. Now, this term 2 is is, a, is basically a factor which is used for a uh, generally accepted conven uh, convention and it is also recommended by IUPAC for the reactions which are destroying radicals in pairs. In, in each of these termination reactions two propagating radicals are getting destroyed and that is the reason this factor 2 is appearing here. Now, you will also notice that in case of initiation reactions 
where one initiation reaction is actually producing two radicals, then also you will use this term 2. Also remember that there are some text or some books which does not use 2, they just write rt is equal to ktm dot square, but it does not matter. The final outcome or whatever conclusion we will get using this expression will remain same whether we use 2 or not. So, the rate expression as we discussed the rate of polymerization is given by rate of propagation which is given by this. This is the total concentration of total radicals present in the reaction mixture. Now, determining this experimental is difficult because of two reasons. Once, one that the concentration of this is very low about 10 to the power minus 8 molar and also this is very reactive transient radicals. So, very this is very difficult to experimentally determine this concentration. Hence, it is a assumption we take as a steady state assumption. Steady state assumption means we consider that the change of this m radical concentration of with time equals to 0. That means, the number of or concentration of radicals remained same with time, which also means that the rate at which the radicals are getting generated, which is given by rate of initiation is same as the rate at which the radicals are getting destroyed. So, the rate of initiation is equal to the rate of termination. Now, this is not unique for a polymerization reaction or radical polymerization chain reaction, this assumption of steady state. This is very common for any reaction where the intermediate is uh, having very low concentration and a very low lifetime. And hence, we will go forward with this assumption, which is very fair assumption. And indeed, the steady state actually happens very quickly within minutes in a normal chain radical chain polymerization, the steady stage actually happens within within very quickly within minutes. So, we consider that R i is equal to R t and which is equals to 2 k t this expression we have already uh, used. So, from this expression we can get the expression for the total radical concentration which is given by this and we can place this in this expression to get the rate of polymerization or rate of propagation by this expression. This is very, very useful expression which will, we will use very frequently in coming to lectures. So, please remember this is very uh, useful expression. Now, if we go back that you see that this uh, rate of propagation or rate of polymerization depends on the type of radical initiation which we do, which is given by this R i, which is rate of initiation. So, we will discuss different type of radical initiators and there are mainly two principal ways which we can generate free radicals one by homo homolytic scission of a single bond pro which produces two free radical species and second by transfer of a single electron to or form an ion or molecules like what happens in a redox reaction. And sometimes single electron transfer process takes place which produces a single free radical species not two species. So, first cases we are talking about generally producing two free radical species and in second cases we might uh, most cases we get a single free radical species. Now, to be a successful compound or successful initiator the, the compound must have few um, properties a few uh, uh, um, attributes which are like the compound has to be readily available it should not it very it should be commercially readily available 
and it's, it must be stable under ambient or refrigerated condition so that we can do the reaction or, or store these molecules in, in, in laboratory or in plant uh, and uh, it may require refrigerated condition but it can be stored. And also it should generate radicals in a practical rate within the within a practical temperature range. So, it should not that happen that it produces radical in a practical rate at very high high temperature which is not practically possible then in that case the compound may not be useful for practical applications. These are the typical ways we can generate radicals thermal redox photochemical high energy radiation and other methods and the thermal method of initiating is the most used in both industry and academic institution. So, we will mainly focus our lecture or discussion on thermal addition, but we will give you example about the other cases and discuss it briefly. So, we will talk about thermal initiators. So, in this case uh, initiator molecule is homolytically cleaved on heating and producing two radicals. And as I said that this is the most widely used mode of generating radical to initiate polymerization for both commercial polymerizations and theoretical studies. Now, this, this initiation process has to be take place has to be taken place in a practical rate in a moderate temperature like normally if we do the reaction in a solvent and solvents are having a, a particular boiling point. So, we must use a radical initiator which can we can use in that particular solvent. So, basically it should have moderately weak bonds which undergo thermolysis thermally induced homolysis at a useful rate above 50 degree centigrade or below may be 120, 100 degree centigrade which is a you know, most useful temperature range. If we have weaker bonds, very weak bond then it might get homolytic cleavage before 50 degree centigrade which is not useful because our laboratory temperature ambient temperature sometimes goes very high even close to 40, 45 degree centigrade then these compounds might get dissociated before even we are adding for a polymerization reactor. So, it should be should not be very weak bond so that it get homolytically cleaved at lower temperature room temperature and it also should not be very highly stable. So, that we need very high temperature to get a radical from this. So, typical bond energy associated with this uh, thermal initiator is uh, about 100 to 170 kilo joule per mole and the typical bonds which can give you this type of bond energy is uh, peroxides, SS bond, NO bond, this type of bonds. So, the so, we generally what the type of bonds uh, we mentioned and the type of compounds it is uh, given by this uh, peroxides, hyper, hyper, hyperoxides, par esters, azo compounds, disulfides, tetragenes and so on. Now, out of all these possible thermal initiators which are used for some cases, but in most cases peroxides and the azo compounds are used in a radical chain polymerization. So, we will discuss we will basically uh, only discuss the use of or the examples of peroxides and azo compounds for this uh, lecture. As I said that peroxides and azo compounds results from the availability of stable form many different compounds you know we have we can have different peroxides and azo compounds which are useful in a 
range of temperature. We can give you some example of peroxides. So, like acetyl or benzoyl peroxide which are very useful. Benzoyl peroxide on heating it gives you two such molecules. One is very common example for this radical use radical initiator is benzoyl peroxide which is very commonly used for radical reaction both in uh, industrial setup and, and in laboratory setup. We can also have alkyl alkyl peroxides like cumyl or tertiary butyl peroxides again gives you to phi now the you can see this radical has to get stabilized otherwise these radicals which is getting generated either in this case or in this case it has to get stabilized otherwise it will it will get it will get destroyed very quickly and it will not be able to participate in further chain initiation reaction and this is the reason why we have this uh, acetyl or benzoyl group or substituted alkyl peroxides. If you have a simple alkyl, alkyl peroxides then it will not be of useful initiator. So, we will next uh, move to the other example of azo initiators. For example, there is very commonly used initiator is uh, azo 2, 2 dash uh, azo this isobutyl nitrile which is very commonly used and commonly mentioned as EIBN molecule. Now, in this case the, now this, the easy dissociation is not because of a weak bond in this case or a moderately weak bond in this case. This case because when it is dissociate it gives you because it gives very stable nitrogen gas that is why we can easily uh, um, this this reaction this homolytic cleavage is, is a very feasible reaction in this uh, particular case and that is the reason why it is very commonly used in practical uh, uh, you know polymerization reactions now this is not water soluble so if somebody wants to do a reaction in aqueous medium then we should look for azo compounds which are which are uh, water soluble and one ex such example is that azo is uh, four cyanohaloic acid where we basically have both side two acidic group and this is water soluble so we can actually use this as initiator now one interesting thing for this initiator that when it you can you can um, uh, imagine that the radical will generate in this place and it will get at the end of the chain. So, the chain end will have a C, chain will end will have a COH group and C. So, the chain we end will have a just like this. So, instead of CH2, CH2 and COOH. So, the polymer chain will have this COH group at this end and you can actually utilize this group for 
doing for the reaction on this polymer. So, basically this ones gives you like this uh, initiator like this gives you advantage of using the N group for further polymer polymerization reaction on the polymer. Now, we have talked about the example few example about uh, on uh, thermal initiators and uh, the rate of decomposition of this thermal initiator is given by the rate of this reaction and this is uh, if you talk about dissociation reaction then we can consider the rate as minus the uh, disappearance of the initiator molecule with time rate of disappearance with the, of the uh, initiator molecule with time which is given by k d i. So, we can write i d is equal to and we basically can integrate where i 0 is the initial initiator concentration in this case and this is the first order decomposition. So, you can put we can get a t half value which is the, the time at which half of the initiators have decomposed is given by this number this is very well known expression for first, first order equation first order reactions where k d is the dissociation constant. Now, the use of initiators depend on the temperature which we want to do the reaction. So, initiator used at different temperature depending on the rate of decomposition. You know, if, if the rate of decomposition is very high, then we can use comparatively lower temperature, and if the rate of decomposition is low, then we need to use a higher temperature. And that that idea we can get from the T half value of the different thermal initiator at different temperature I will give you the example in a minute. Now, in generally the AIBN is commonly used at 50 to 70 degree centigrade and acetyl peroxide used for 70 to 90 degrees, 90 degree centigrade benzoyl peroxide used at this temperature. So, depending on the reaction temperature we can choose which initiator molecule we should use and this difference of dissociation rate or decomposition rate is due to the substituents present on the each molecule. For example, we talk about acyl peroxide and alkyl peroxide and because acyl peroxide ha will have R C O dot whether as alkyl peroxide will have R O dot. So, obviously, acyl peroxides will be more stable than R O dot. So, the D rate of decomposition for acyl peroxide will be higher than alkyl peroxide. Similarly, for azo compounds, if the resulting um, resulting radical is much stable and which is which happens if we have the substitutions have a ability to uh, stabilize either by resonance or by uh, electron uh, donating um, groups, then we can have a higher rate of decomposition. So, as I give example that acyl peroxides uh, have uh, a better uh, no higher decomposition rate than alkyl peroxides and uh, because it gives you a stable RCCO radical and for azo compounds the rate of decomposition increases in the order of this R group allyl or benzoyl to tertiary secondary primary because of the ability to stabilize the resulting radical. Now, when you talk about initiation reaction, now we want to find out the R i. Remember in that expression, we have left the expression with R i. Now, we need to find out what is the R i for different thermal different initiation process and let, let us begin with thermal initiation which, which we just discussed now. We just discussed now. Now, this is the first step of initiation reaction that we discussed earlier 
this is the decomposition step and this is given by the k d which is the rate of decomposition and once the radical forms it immediately react with the first monomer which we call the initiation reaction and there is a particular rate constant associated with this with k i. So, this rate of dissociation is given by twice f k d i, k d is the rate of dissociation and remember this is 2 in this case because each dissociation is producing 2 radicals which are generating 2 polymers. So, basically we can generate 2 polymer or propagating radical from this 2 radical that is why it is multiplied by a factor 2 as it was in the case of termination reaction. Remember we use 2 for termination reaction because in each termination reaction 2 radicals were getting generated. In each initiation reaction 2 radicals getting produced. So, we use these things and f is the efficiency radical efficiency or initiator efficiency which means out of the radical which got produced during this decomposition reaction out of them what is the fraction of the radicals could initiate a polymerization reaction and its efficiency and it is generally between 0 0.5 to 0.8 and that happened because some of the radicals which gets generated because of this decomposition reaction might actually get destroyed either by coupling with each other or might get destroyed due to reaction with others. I, I may talk about little bit more about this radical efficiency in a minute. Now, in this reaction So, the, the total initiation reaction is given by these two step, but this is a much slower step than this. You can understand this is a radical reaction. So, this is much faster reaction compared to a radical dissociation a, a initiated dissociation reaction. So, hence this rate of initiation is given by the rate of dissociation. So, R i is actually given by rate of dissociation hence R i is given by this. So, we are talking about R i is given by this R i is twice f k d i which is same as rate of dissociation and because this step is much slower and rate determining step than this step. Now, we place this R i in our equation we have discussed in at the beginning of this lecture we can get this expression. So, this is the expression we got in beginning of uh, today's lecture. So, we get this expression for thermally initiated re radical chain reaction. So, this is the so this is the expression for rate of polymerization for a thermally initiated polymerization reaction. So, you can see this rate is directly proportional to the concentration of monomer, but is inverse uh, directly proportional to root over of root of initiator concentration. Now, we can write we have seen this expression or deduce this expression earlier. So, we can write instead of this we can write this expression where I 0 is the initiator concentration at time 0. 
so initial initiator concentration and we can also express another term p which is the conversion which is given by this expression which means that the fraction of monomer which got consumed during polymerization. So, like the fraction of functional groups that got consumed in a step growth polymerization we define similar way a conversion which is basically the fraction of monomers which we which disappear during this reaction. So, we can basically write rate of polymerization is given by rate of disappearance of monomer which is given by this expression replacing I concentration I with this and then we can rearrange and integrate to get this expression. So, this is the expression where we can relate the conversion which is the percentage of monomer molecules got consumed with time if we know the initiator concentration initial initiator concentration and the other rate constants. Now, the at the end of the polymerization which is basically the time is infinity if we replace the time with t infinity then we can get what is the maximum possible conversion we can achieve during a radical chain polymerization. So, if you put t is equal to infinity this term would be 0, so it will be 1. So, then we can actually get the p infinity value which is the maximum possible or maximum amount of uh, maximum fraction of monomer which we can be polymerized in a radical poly, radical chain polymerization can be given by this expression. We will use this expression and solve a uh, um, numerical problem quickly in the next lecture and we will also talk about the molecular weight uh, in chain radical, radical chain polymerization in the next lecture.